Hi, my name's Luke Slevin, I'm age 42, and I became homeless first in 2006, where I slept rough for, you know, for all that time in, in the bush in Brixton. I felt at the time that was a safer place for me to sleep rough, because uh, sadly there's a lot of violence against people who sleep rough, and um, I got attacked twice, you know, while I was sleeping rough. So, so that made me think, you know, I need to find a really quiet place to sleep so that won't happen to me again. Um, like many rough sleepers have said to me, it's a war zone. They're in fight or flight. Constant trauma, living hand to mouth, day to day. Doors being shut in their faces. They were just surviving. Their mortality is probably something like 10 or 12 times the average. It's deprivation upon stilts being homeless. My name is Nick McGuire. I'm an Associate Professor in Clinical Psychology at the University of Southampton. My name is Jane Cook. I'm a Health and Homelessness Advisor with the Rough Sleepers Initiative, which is part of the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. People from inclusion health groups often have overlapping complex health conditions. We call this trimorbidity, the combination of physical illness, mental illness and substance use disorders, often in the context of situated disadvantage and multiple social problems. Health is intimately related to where you are in the social hierarchy. You're, you're talking about the most vulnerable, the most chaotic people in society. People with so-called characteristics of personality disorder are people who have survived despite incredibly difficult lives. It's really important that we have a trauma lens and understand the levels and the prevalence and how to work with individuals that have got traumatic histories. And what was key in actually engaging with them was one, going out and doing outreach, doing it at the same time every week and doing the same route so they got to know your face and then gradually building up that uh, relationship. A, a big influence over psychology has been Maslow's hierarchy of needs and that you need to have that basic level of food, shelter, warmth before you can start addressing any of the other things and I think in order to get housed some people will need to do some work on the, their psychological well-being and their, their mental health. And so it's not as simple as just, well, let's get somebody housed first. You could explain that people who have severe and enduring mental health needs who are on the street have already fallen through every gap in the system. We all have a duty to vulnerable people. You know, yeah, that, that night I got picked up by two to um, out team, outreach team workers and um, for the first time I thought there's a light at the end of that tunnel. So if you give them a little bit more, if you give them some good experiences and you give them a, an honest and trustworthy relationship, they will take advantage of that, they will use that to help themselves cut out of their situation. So whilst we need a lot more change to truly end rough sleeping, um, I'm really pleased to be working with Anemo and others to do everything we can now to act and help improve people's lives.